Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that Wargaming has once again lost the plot. In the upcoming update 13.2, we were supposed to receive a fairly large nerf to submarines, in particular a nerf addressing shotgunning. And while we are still getting that nerf, it is yet again being followed by a direct buff to subs. And... It's a bit more of a buff than the little turning circle improvement that so many players were upset with last time. It's a much more direct buff that's going to directly improve the performance of submarines. And, well, we're going to get to all that and so much more in today's video because, dear viewer, we are going over the update notes for patch 13.2. If you want to get straight to those submarine changes, check out the timeline down below. The chapters are set up, so if you want to go straight to there, you can go directly there and hear me talk about nothing more than just those submarine changes. Or if you're interested in another particular part of the update, you can hop around down there in the timeline down below. If you want to stick with me through the whole thing, I thank you for that and you'll check out the description down below and find the link to the art update article there where you can get a day's worth of premium time completely for free just by scrolling through the article so let's go ahead and get on into it but first if you do find yourself enjoying this video find it informational entertaining or you just enjoy it please make sure to drop a like leave a comment all that jazz and subscribe while you're at it helps out on the youtube side of things of course so Update 13.2. While not an overly large update, it does bring several things to us. We are getting the Commonwealth cruisers in early access. The U.S. aircraft carriers are leaving early access and are going to be available to everyone to grind out. A new round of ranked and brawls, as well as, of course, those submarine changes that we talked about. So we're going to hit the highlights of this update, talk about what you need to know to get the most out of this update, and all that jazz. Again, link to this article is in the description down below. So starting out with the Pinata Hunt, they say update 13.2 brings the pinata hunt event you'll be able to hunt a special pinata ship during the event to gain an advantage over your opponents available as a separate battle type this year's event features the specially decorated colorful island map so these battles take place in tier 8 to tier 9 ships of all types seven players per team when the pinata is taken down, a shrinking key area will spawn on the spot where it sinks. Pinata Hunt will also introduce a new mechanic, support consumables. There are eight unique support consumables in total, with each ship having access to five of them. One consumable for each ship type will be unlocked at the start, while up to four others can be attained by completing missions or by purchasing them with the credits in the armory. You'll be able to select only one support consumable per battle. During the Pinata Hunt event, you can obtain Pinata tokens by completing combat missions. You can exchange these tokens for rewards in the armory. So typically when they do these random type of events, they are in reality in reality trying out new mechanics or new battle types. This is more than likely one of those test runs. It could be some type of boss battle, perhaps, with sinking a key ship, and then, of course, the key area spawns around it that you then have to capture. And, of course, testing out the new support consumables could be hinting at those coming to the game in some way, shape, or form in the future. It sounds like a pretty interesting mode, and I am going to be looking forward to trying out when the update goes live on Wednesday. So, of course, the other big pull, I, well, I should actually say the biggest pull of this update is that we are finally getting Commonwealth Cruisers. And thankfully, they are geared to be submarine hunters. So let's see what they have to say about those. The long-awaited Commonwealth Cruisers are entering early access in update 13.2. Both light and heavy cruisers are represented in this line, with low to mid tiers being armed with 152mm guns, while tier 8 and above are armed with 203mm artillery. They can dish out decent damage per minute, but their drawbacks include relatively poor ballistics and slow traversing turrets. Starting from tier 3, these ships are additionally armed with torpedoes. At tier 7, these torpedoes become long range and can even be launched from stealth due to the to the cruiser's excellent concealment. As is standard for most cruisers, the line features Hydroacoustic Search, available in its own slot at Tier 4, and sharing a slot with DFAA at later tiers. 
Starting at Tier 5, the signature of the Commonwealth ship's crawling smoke generator also becomes available in its own slot. Its long action time allows the cruisers to remain concealed while moving slowly. Starting from Tier 8, the ships are equipped with repair party with standard characteristics. Additionally, cruisers also have access to the enhanced submarine surveillance consumable with improved range starting from Tier 5, and their depth charge airstrikes also have improved characteristics. In honor of the event, the following thematic permanent camouflages are being added to the game. Indian Tiger for the Delhi, which is the Tier 5, New Zealand Fern for the Auckland, which is the Tier 8, and Australian Ornament for the Cerberus, which is the Tier 10. Additionally, Historical Commanders Harold Farncombe and, Le oh, man. Harold Farncombe and Leonard Murray, the Commonwealth Rockfish Patch, the Commonwealth Team Commander Flag, and Commonwealth Team Premier Containers are being added to the game. So I'm, of course, very happy that the Commonwealth Cruisers are finally being added into the game. They are mega long overdue. I really like the Auckland's uh, camo. It's a little New Zealand Fern camo. That looks so cool, in my mind at least. But yep, they're finally being added to the game. Very happy for that. And, I mean, think about all the players that are from these countries that now can play more ships that are actually from their country of origin, right? So, excellent work there. Alright, now these submarine updates. So, this little blurb is a little short. They did say that they will be re releasing an update article just on these changes alone. But they do mention what these changes are here, so let's go ahead and get into them. They say... Multiple new features and changes for submarines are going to be implemented with update 13.2. This will affect not only their gameplay, but also upgrades and balance. So first off, to further address the issue of submarine shotgunning, submarine torpedoes will be adjusted to deal, with, to, to deal different amounts of damage based on distance. Next point, submarines will also receive changes when it comes to upgrades. Some of the existing ones will be either changed or removed, while new ones will be introduced. Gameplay improvements, which affect both submarines and surface ships. The ping icon now actually heads in the same direction as the submarine is, so you get a better idea of where the submarine's at. That's what that means. Additionally, balance changes have been applied to submarines in order to maintain the same level of effectiveness for the ship type. Okay, so also too, they are saying that they are going to, um, for the first week of update 13.2, you get a 100% discount on demounting upgrades during the first week so feel free to shift around your builds if you feel like it but anyway so these little bullet points what do they mean so the first bullet point the shotgun fix that is that new mechanic that we talked about a couple of weeks ago where now essentially submarines can only fire torpedoes from three kilometers out from the target because from 2.9 kilometers in, the torpedoes do a minimal amount of damage. For example, with the Gato, a torpedo from the Gato will do like, I think it's 167 damage if it's fired from 2.9 kilometers in. But from 2.9 to 3 kilometers, the damage increases from a very small amount of the overall damage to the maximum amount. So now you have to be 3 kilometers out if you wish to fire torpedoes at the enemy ships. That of course means that if you are in a destroyer and you can get within three kilometers of the enemy sub, they can basically do nothing to you now unless it's the I-56 or the Thrasher with their deck mounted gun, right? So now you've become significantly more scary for that submarine. So great change there in my opinion. Um, but there is a little bit of a caveat with that blessing there because the three kilometer limit isn't really too challenging for most higher tier submarines to deal with, especially ships like the Gato, which are, you know, hyper-focused on being able to shotgun the enemy ships. I think like four-ish kilometers would be a little bit more challenging for submarines to pull off their shotgunning maneuver at, because three kilometers out is still, I'm sorry, three kilometers in is still pretty close to the target, and there's not a whole lot of time for ships to move. So, Really, at three kilometers, you're still able to punish large cruisers, heavy cruisers, and battleships, which are the ships that typically get shotgunned anyway. So four kilometers out, I think that would kind of alleviate this problem a little bit more. That or nerfing periscope death would fix that problem. 
Okay, so um, upgrades, where I talked about some of those in previous videos, I'm not going to go into that. Like I said, the gameplay improvements, the ping icon for the acoustic ping is now more accurate in that it follows the direction that the submarine is going. So you might be thinking, well, Sea Lord, what's this buff you were talking about in the beginning? It's not mentioned anywhere in the submarine updates. Oh yeah, it is, but it's... um. It's pretty vaguely stated. See that last little bullet point there where it says, Additionally, balance changes have been applied to submarines in order to maintain the same level of effectiveness for the ship type. Well, if you scroll down to the balance changes, this is where you'll find the quite large buff. So if you look down at the balance changes, you'll see after the one degree buff to the to the tones, I'm sorry, one degree nerf to the tones. Um, torpedo firing angles there's a little bullet point right there that says increase damage of all submarine alternative torpedoes by 15 percent so when this update goes live every single sub that has alternative torpedoes are going to receive a 15 percent damage buff to those torpedoes every single submarine with alternative torps which is most of the higher tier ones, right? That's a pretty big buff, a 15% damage buff. Imagine, if you will, if your ship got a 15% damage buff to its shells. That's pretty significant. So while on one hand, they nerfed the shotgunning, on the other hand, they increased the torpedo damage by 15%. Now, um, the acoustic torpedoes for the British Tech Tree subs are being also being increased by 5%, and the German submarines U-190 and U-2501 are getting buffs to their uh, torpedo range by about a kilometer, -ish, kilometer and a half-ish for their stock alternative torpedoes, and then by another like 1.7, 1.2 kilometers for their researchable alternative torpedoes. So, yeah, now the Germans I can kind of understand because their whole thing was they had to play pretty close into the target either way. And when you say, well, now your torpedoes are useless from three kilometers in, yeah, I can kind of get that. Actually, I can't kind of get that. I do get that with the German torps, right? Because that their whole thing was short-range gameplay, right? But anyway, 15% buff to the torpedoes of the uh, alternative torpedoes. These are the dummy gutted torpedoes. So, yeah... Yet again, they attempt to fix a problem with a method that is kind of, kind of successful in my opinion. She's a little bit more range to it, but then they still turn around and buff the damage of the torpedoes by 15%. Yeah, yeah, it's going to make a whole lot of people mad. And I can understand that, hey look, we're nerfing these guys so hard that you can't shotgun effectively against half of the ships in game but you can still bully the other half of ships in the game right so the damage per torpedo needs to be increased to keep the average damage of the submarines at about where wargaming apparently wants it to be that or they feel like submarines aren't popular enough and they want more people to play them they will do this they will absolutely buff ships for no reason beyond that not enough people are playing them. They've admitted to that in the past, and that still seems to be the reasoning here, at least. Either that, again, either that, or the fact that they are nerfing the arming range, if you will, of these torpedoes. So, yeah. Now, submarine damage is actually incredibly low across the board, if you look at it. Because just given the nature of submarine gameplay and how they literally only have torpedoes and they have a relatively small amount of, of torpedoes and they have to spend most of the match you know, stalking a target, getting in range, and then ripping the torpedoes and hoping you hit them, right? Because of all that, their damage is quite low across the board. But their frustration levels are, of course, quite high because it's no fun being singled out and picked on by the submarine with the limited amount of well, action you can take against them in turn. So, while I understand that the three kilometer arming range nerf, if you will, against the submarines is pretty rough for a good amount of them, is it right just to buff them by 15% in terms of their damage right out of the gate? Like, this is a class that Wargaming knows isn't overly well received by a large chunk of the player base, right? And they're just going to proactively buff them by 15% in terms of their damage. So, 
I'm not sure if that's a great call from Wargaming. Maybe like a 5% damage buff, and then you can crank it up from there. And I, I would think they would have learned this from the CV rework, because in the CV rework, you had the same type of thing happening, where there was a problem with either the, the um, speed of the planes, the amount of damage the planes can dish out, the spotting, well, they never really addressed the spotting range of the planes. There was some type of issue going on with the CVs and the CV rework, and they would just drop the nerf hammer with one hot fix, and then do a crazy adjustment, and the next hot fix that would turn around and buff the CVs. So the CVs were just a pendulum of they were useless in one hot fix, and then they were crazy strong in another hot fix. And it seems like we might be going back into the same territory with the submarines. Or maybe they're trying to avoid getting into that same territory with the submarines, but they are by doing this, right? So, yeah. I mean... I think you could just you could just given them the nerf, waited a couple of weeks, and then release a hot fix with a damage buff if it was that detrimental to submarine performance. As I said before, after playing the Gato in the test server after the three kilometer arming nerf, I don't think it's gonna be a huge impact in terms of ships like the Gato that are already incredibly good for shotgunning. For some of the other ones, again like the Germans, which again, are meant to be played at close range. Yeah, probably so. So I'm not sure it's something you can just go and just, you know, 15% across the board, here's a buff. Like, the, the, the Gatos, like we, we showed on the test server, it doesn't really care about this, this nerf, and now you just gave it 15% more damage. So, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a fun update, fellas. I'm sure we'll get plenty of comments about this down below. But one bright, shiny star is that ranked battles this go-round will not have CVs in them. It's in a 6v6 format with Tier 8 ships in both the Silver and the Gold League. And, and the Gold League. Um, they are in a 6v6... I'm sorry, Tier 10 ships in a 6v6 format. In Bronze League at 6v6 with Tier 8. My apologies there. There are no, sub, um, no CVs in ranked at least this go round, but there are submarines so can't fully escape them for this patch fellas most unfortunately even brawls this go round has subs and cvs in them so there's no way we can run away from submarines this update with the exception of clan battles well fellas that is it for update 13.2 for the major highlights of the update let me know what you guys think about the update down below. I'm sure we'll hear, we will hear, hear plenty about these submarine changes. So it should be a fun comment section down there. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. One way to 75,000 subscribers. We just passed 55,000 subscribers today, the day of recording. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. That is incredibly awesome. I'm looking forward to getting to 75,000 here in the future. So hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday, wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.